What up guys? Ugh. I don't sound good. What's up guys? Kevin here from Fashion Forward Always. I'm here with a formal review a formal review of Coder's speed loader bag and their sidearm attachment. So this review has been a long time coming. It was just continually pushed back because of other things, family, vacation, school. So I'm here finally with a finalized, um, I guess full review of it. So Coded is a brand run by my friend at Chris dot or at Chris JSW. You can follow him on Instagram. He posts a lot of new stuff. He is going to have a restock on both the sidearm and the speed loader. So definitely check that out. All right, let's get started with the review. So first off, let me say this is definitely a unique looking bag. Actually, look, let me pull it up really quick. So here is the bag in itself. It is such a unique shape. It's not like any other I guess, tech wear bag that I've ever seen compared to Aoku's or acronyms. So let me give you guys a quick rundown of whatever is, I guess, on the speed loader. So I just took off the attachment. So let me just quickly cover the attachment. This is their standard size attachment. So what is included in the box is just a bunch of D-rings um, that you can just kind of put all the way on the back side. And this can, or this would probably fit I guess a wallet, bus pass, metro pass, um, some headphones as well. Um, possibly depending how small your smartphone is. I don't believe that this will fit like an 8 plus or an iPhone um, X. I actually have an 8. So let me see. Uh, yeah, like it could fit an 8, but you got to angle it in like a certain way. You got to angle it head first and then you got to slide it in and then you can fit it easily. So this is about as big as his tech little sidearm is going to get. So usually what I do with this is that I loop my belt through right here and then I just kind of use it as like a dangling, I guess, side pouch. And I believe he includes one of his coated patches on for it. And actually like this is actually my favorite part. I'm, uh, I'm stupid, but like, Look at how like cool that fidlock buckle is. It's just like, it's a magnetic slide fidlock buckle. The same thing that you will see on the ACG or the Nike Lab commuters. Definitely check those out. Those are cool shoes. I did a review on them a little, a little while back, but yeah, like they're still nice sneakers. Again, I digress. So this can seamlessly work with this bag. Um, Chris actually basically designed for both of them to work together but they can also work apart. But I believe that they work pretty damn well together. So let me just use that as a segue to get into the bag review. So here is the configuration that Chris usually wears it in and how I believe that I recommend you guys wear it in is that it's kind of like a top down, almost like an upside down tombstone, <laughs> as stupid as that sounds kind of like this position. And I did have the sidearm attached to the speed loader for a second. Uh, so the speed loader does come with these two little snap-on clips that you can attach, I guess, an acronym um, attachment to, or you can even attach like how I'm doing a speed loader as well. So it's just a very simple installation. So you can have it like this, so it kind of lines up uh, like I did talk to Chris about that. He did sort of plan it in a way where it kind of lines up with the third arm, not third arm, attachment, my bad. So, um, so like, let me just give you guys a quick rundown of the speed loader in itself. So on the front side, it has this mole system. Again, like I talked about, you can add your attachments or your sidearm to it. This top pouch, it is using a magnetic, I guess, circle lock. So you can't just like take it out. Uh, you would actually have to slide it down and then take it out. So I talked to Chris about this. He had multiple prototypes where he was testing all these different types of, um, I, I guess, enclosures or button enclosures. And he says that this is the one that worked the best. And he also attached a strip of Velcro on the bottom of here as well because he didn't like how it would kind of like fray upward. So it's all those little attention to detail that Chris has really worked on this. Um, he's worked quite a while for this. So 
That was the front. The front also has this little pouch. So this is all one big pouch. So essentially his idea is basically you can throw like change in here, you can throw your keys in here, and then all of like the small like miscellaneous, I guess, items that you might need, you can just unzip this, reach in here, and then go on the bottom because there is a little, I guess, holder in the bottom. And then that was the front. Um, actually, let me just add on again, like another Velcro strap right there. So that was that. Let's look at the back side. So the back side is basically, it heavily reminds me of a 3A3TS. So it just has the mole system all there. So they're basically like three configurations to this bag. You can have it top down, to the side, and on the back side. So the back side, like I was saying, um, has this mole system. So you can just add on a bunch of attachments depending on your own, I guess, preference. So, not bad, not bad at all. So, that's one of the interesting things about this bag that I did want to touch about, is the structure of the bag itself. It's, it does not lay flat like the Aoku um, bag, nor does it lay flat like the 3A3TS stuff. It's definitely much more of a structured bag, which I do like. So he did add this extra support on the, I guess, right side of the bag itself, just to kind of give it the sturdy look and kind of give you like a rough estimate on like what can actually fit in the bag. I believe that he has a video on either his website or Instagram, which I will link both in the description below, where he kind of fits like a bunch of shit in this bag, just to show the capacity of it. So let's continue with the small details. So. Here is the zipper. It's extremely heavy duty. Um, and the lining is all taped seam. Um, it's all extremely nice. Uh, relatively spacious for this type of bag in itself. Just you can fit, uh, basically what I would fit when I carry this bag would be, I guess a book, headphones. I would carry, well, I'll just throw my wallet, my phone in there, charger, power bank. And I would probably even take, well, like depending, like I could even probably fit like a thin jacket in here. Like I have a windbreaker, which I've put in here multiple times. And I've also used this as my workout bag every now and then, depending on what I need to carry to the gym. So now that we covered all the details, let's go over the pros and cons. So let's start with the pros. One of my pros is that this is a awesome, awesome looking bag. So I think this has very much that futuristic look. So there's sharp edges, like very, very like sharp edges, these bold like cuts. It's just like, it's such a, I guess, progressive and such an aggressive design that I really do appreciate it. So this is something that you can even see as like, let's see, what are some science fiction movies that I can see? I, I, I can even possibly see this being like a military issue from uh, Blade Runner, except probably not in this color, probably in the olive color or even in the black color. I can definitely see this being like a military garment from like Blade Runner 2049. The reason why I chose the red colorway is that it really reminded me of Akira and it's just like this like blood red. And then the reason why I like to pair it with, why I like to pair it with the olive is it kind of reminds me, okay, as edgy as I fucking sound, it kind of reminds me of like a pool of blood and then there's like leaves on top of it. And it's just like that whole like blood on the leaves type of thing. It's just like, ah! So that was one of the pros. Another pro is the customization of this. So you can actually turn the, I guess, strap into a belt in itself. So all you have to do is detach these two things. After you detach them, you are basically left with this strap, which you can use as a belt Chris has shown me how to do this. Uh, you just kind of have to fiddle with it and then you kind of get like your natural, like your natural intuition on how to like operate this beautiful, beautiful thing. So basically just obviously attach the two ends and then you can use this as a legitimate quick release belt. So like a lot of companies like to tell that they have a quick release belt, but in actuality really isn't that quick release. So. Chris uses a Fidlock magnetic buckle for the uh, strap slash belt. So obviously you can tighten it up like this and then you can loosen it like that. But if you really need a quick release, you pull on this red tab, done. 
In like a second, you can get your pants off and you're ready for some zuck. This is extremely, extremely useful. If you do need a belt, this is kind of like a two-in-one almost, where you get the bag and you can even use it as a belt. So I heavily, heavily recommend it. I do wear this, I do wear my Aoku, and I do use my Havana Cobra belt. So all three of those belts are fantastic. Each have its own purpose, but definitely you can get, I guess, you can kill two birds with one stone if you get this bag. My first con is that there are personally a few design flaws that I wasn't too keen about or I didn't really like that much. So the first one is the zipper in itself. So the zipper, the zipper is extremely, extremely sturdy. But just the way that the zipper was bent, there is a little hump right here that a, uh, a part of like, I guess the water coating is starting to wear down. So I can do a close up on that. So it does have this little hump, which it's kind of almost inevitable. Um, I, I'm not sure how you would be able to fix this, but kind of curves down and creates this um, bump up to kind of compensate for the curve into the bag. So I believe maybe like, maybe a year down, maybe like, maybe even two years down, it could show a little bit more wear. But so far I've been using this for, oh, close to like six months now and it's not too bad. It really isn't. But it is something that I expect to be fixed possibly in a 2.0 or maybe even like in a 1.5 or something like that. So another design flaw that I found um, kind of annoying was the sharp, sharp, sharp edges. So I've actually worn this quite a few times and I would get my forearm scraped, I would get like my elbow scraped because of all the sharp edges. So um, a few sharp edges that I would actually kind of mention is this structured area in itself. It's just like this, see like you guys can hear that? It's very, very sharp at the end. So it kind of like scrapes against my skin and it does, uh, I guess, irritate it a little bit more. And another thing is that all, all these like sharp raw edges kind of give off this feeling of, I guess, not being as premium or as luxury. It gives off a very rugged, a very DIY feel, which you know, Chris isn't like this huge company, you know, Coded is like just starting to make bags and like sidearms. So I don't expect him to have that perfect, like, you know, like the presentation, like I don't expect him to be perfected in it, but I do expect it to be better in the 2.0 version. And I thought I did mention that. I think he did a much better job on the sidearm than the speed loader because the speed loader, it does feel a little bit rough, a little bit I guess raw and DIY, while this, I definitely can see this being sold even at, let's say, maybe even Barney's, I can see this being sold even by like Gorilla Group, um, possibly even like Acronym in itself. I'm actually like amazed on how high quality this sidearm really is, and I definitely suggest everybody pick it up, either the regular version or the XL version. Uh, the XL version, um, the dimensions are a little bit bigger. I believe uh, Theo, um, my good friend Theo at This Is Theodore um, got one, I believe a few other people do, and there are dimensions on the coded website. So another con that I do want to touch upon just really quickly is that this bag, just depending on who you are, the size constraints are really gonna limit, I guess, your usability of the bag itself. So I am a college student, I'm a third year, I am a biochem and cell biology major. So I tend to carry my laptop, tend to carry my notes. So the only thing that kind of prevents me from doing or from having this be my main bag is just the sheer size constraints. I feel like if uh, Chris didn't do this slope, I would be able to fit a lot more because my biggest thing is that the opening just isn't big enough for a lot of my stuff. And like this curvature kind of limits like what I can really do with this bag. Um, like for example, I can't fit my laptop in here, but you can fit like an iPad and like you can fit like an iPad Air, I believe. You can fit that, but not a Pro. Um, and it's just like, I can't fit like my five star note or spiral notebook, but I can fit like my, uh, my composition notebook for lab, but like it's just like things like that that like prevent me from really using this as like a daily carrier. And 
it's like in this weird like middle area where it's like too small to be my main bag but it's too big to be like my little like carry on or my little like carry bag because I believe the Aoku one is around three-fourths the size of it maybe even half the size of this just just purely by volume I believe it's like around half the size of it and that is like slim enough to where I can actually keep it on my body for like you know any like any miscellaneous um, items such as phone wallet gum you know bus pass you know lighter etc so it's just this is just in a very awkward sizing I guess size area for me to I guess use this as my main bag so that's about all of my pros that I did want to talk about so definitely let me know how you guys like this bag uh, also let me know how you guys like this a little bit more serious um, review style I do want to take reviews a little bit more serious because I do want to provide at least constructive criticisms towards I guess small brands but I mean like I doubt that like you know like any like big you know company would even take notice of my channel but I do want to be a little bit more serious with my reviews my pickups and all that other stuff I can still joke around I can still meet them around all that jazz so let me know what you guys think about this I'll be doing a few on body shots with some clothes uh, well I mean shit obviously Kevin but I'm gonna be doing some on body shots so let that bitch roll So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I am working on more stuff. I have my Lunar Force Die video that I'm finishing up editing. Probably as you guys watch this, I am editing it. Editing it. Um, so I think my Lunar Forces came out pretty decent. Um, but again, it's a spicy boy. Uh, I also have my 2018 up and coming brands and brands you should be looking out for and I have also a lookbook that I'm putting together it's just hard with like the limited I guess the limited crew that I even have I kind of wish I had somebody who would help me film but shit's always a struggle but yeah thank you guys so much for watching I'll talk to you guys next week see you guys later peace